Welcome to the last video of the reinforced concrete frame analysis. Um, in the previous two videos, uh, we build the model, we define the material and uh, geometric parameters of the model, uh, we run a gravity analysis, then we run a model analysis, and finally we run a pushover analysis in both the x and the y direction. In this video, we're going to run time history analysis, also both in the x and the y direction, but in, in, the, in, in an independent way. Uh, what I'm saying is not uh, with the accelerations both in x and y happening at the same time. However, uh, the difference is, I mean, you can, you can have a simultaneous analysis uh, considerably easy as well, just by doing a few modifications. So um, first we're going to go through the analysis uh, on the X direction. As you can see, I created a file that is called analysis time history X. Um, and this is the file, this one that you see here. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I am defining K and J value like I did before uh, in the still moment resting frame videos. If you haven't watched the time, uh, the time history analysis of the still moment resisting frame, uh, I recommend you to have a look in those videos first, um, as these parameters K and J are explained there. Um, however, for this case, uh, I'm just putting them in case I want to perform an incremental dynamic analysis or a cloud analysis or a multiple earthquake analysis uh, in the future. So that's why I'm. I'm placing these two parameters. Otherwise, they are they are not useful. Um, so in the recorders, the time history uh, recorders, I'm using the horizontal reactions, or I'm getting the horizontal reactions, the story displacement, and the story acceleration. I'm not getting any element-based uh, recorder, so I'm not getting the stresses or the forces or anything like that. I'm just interested in the, in the global parameters in this case. Um, I'm getting the reactions from all those nodes in the base. I am getting the other two parameters, displacement and accelerations, from um, the, the top story or the only story uh, nodes. Um, as you can see, the only thing that basically changes is the name of the file, the nodes, and also this last uh, argument here that is going to basically tell the OpenSys what I am trying to save into this recorder. If you want to have a look in the in the other recorders that are available, you can have you can just simply go to the wiki of OpenSys and you will find uh, many different options. Uh, now, for this case, I'm just using a very simplified approach to the uh, damping. So uh, I'm just basically setting up the alpha value of the Rayleigh damping to zero and the beta value to two times uh, the damping ratio, that in this case is 5% because I'm using a concrete structure, divided by omega that is derived on, on the period. It, um, after that, I'm, uh, I'm just defining uh, some of the inputs. In this case, I'm using the same file that I use for the still moment resisting frame, but if still, instead of analyzing all the time history, I'm just analyzing the first 1,750 steps because uh, uh, as you might remember, in the first uh, analysis that I was doing, um, my ground motion record actually had three earthquakes in it because I was analyzing uh, multiple earthquakes. However, uh, in this case, I mean, obviously that's something that you can do, um, but in this case, I'm just uh, interested in analyzing the first earthquake. And this is because the second earthquake is already quite large for, for this model. So I don't want to, the, the materials to reach the formations that uh, would lead to uh, lack of uh, convergence. Although I would get results anyway up to the point of uh, lack of convergence, uh, it is better if we just limit it to this number for this specific structure and for this specific ground motion. So everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, in this case, I am setting the direction of the, of the excitation in one. So it's, uh, this is important because this is a 3D model, so I have to make sure that this is going in the direction that I'm analyzing, and also that the period is, corresponds to that uh, vibration uh, direction. And basically everything else remains the same in comparison with the other model. As you can see, I haven't changed anything 
here in uh, my algorithm. If you want to know where uh, these values come from or how to uh, understand all these uh, parameters here in this script, please have a look in that video. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to close it and I just quickly show you also the analysis time history in Y. So this is exactly the same thing uh, with the exception that obviously I am adapting everything to be in the Y direction. So the recorders say Y instead of X. Uh, the degree of freedom for the recorders is 2 because I want to uh, see everything in the global Y. Um, I'm changing the parameter of the period. Also, I'm, I haven't changed here to change it to, for example, T3 or something. I'm just leaving it as T1 as at the end is just a variable, the name of a variable, but I'm changing this period. Um, to match it with my simplified approach to estimate the, the damping. Um, again, I'm using only this number of steps. And then finally, uh, when I do uh, assign the pattern, I just make sure that the direction of my pattern or the direction of my earthquake is uh, the global Y. You might now imagine that if you want to put two different earthquakes uh, on each direction, x and y, you can simply do it by assigning two patterns, one in direction one, the second one in direction two. Um, although it's not going to be covered in this, in this video, it's something that you can probably derive by yourself easily. Um, everything else is exactly the same, so let's run it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, the OpenSys. So just to remind you, I I normally use this uh, approach of calling a single file that contains everything else. For example, this one contains the model, uh, the analysis for gravity, and the analysis for time history. Uh, this is absolutely not essential. However, for me, it's easier to just call one file instead of having to call three files in order to run the analysis. So uh, source run um, time history x.tcl and let's wait for the answer. And finally, we have the results. Uh, it was completed successfully. And this only means that uh, the OpenSys found convergence in every single step of my ground motion. Uh, in case, uh, f considering my algorithm, in case you get failed, that means that at one step, um, there wasn't convergence. However, um, you can still get the results for everything else before that. So sometimes this could be considered as a collapse depending on, on what's the approach that you're using for your analysis. And then everything else before that is uh, at least uh, probably not the, the, the steps that are super close to the, to, the, to the lack of convergence, but at least the beginning of the, of the ground motion is still completely valid. So you can see I get these three files from my recorder. So for example, my displacement in X, uh, if I, I'm going to just uh, copy it to Excel. So uh, let's see, there we go. So I paste it. And obviously if I, if I want to plot the time history of the displacement of the story, I can just directly do it time versus uh, displacement. And here we are, this is what we have. So let me put it on top, just because I'm going to put also the results in the other direction in a minute. And you can see that here I have this, um, this uh, uh, the, the, the ground motion. Uh, you can see that there is not a lot of damping here. I mean, this is still vibrating even with slow, small accelerations. And this is also, this is only because of my simplified approach for, for the damping. So just make sure that you uh, consider the damping appropriately, uh, depending on your model. And let's do it now with the other direction. So basically, by the way, I'm taking only one of the nodes instead of all of them, because they should have very similar results. Uh, as you can see, I mean, they are slightly different depending if if, it, if the node is uh, on one axis or the other, but it's pretty much uh, the same for all of them. So I'm just going to use this, the first one as a reference. Now, um, I'm going to do the same for the other direction. 
So the only thing I have to do is to repeat the analysis, but now with Y and there we go. So as you can see, I will create the three new files and they will be changing the size. You can you know that it's running because you see that the sizes of the recorders are con continuously changing. So I'm going to uh, pause the recording and just wait until it's finished and come back to you. So here we are, uh, we have finished the analysis. You can see that the recorders are now um, there. So let's check the displacements again. I'm going to copy paste them to my same uh, Excel file. I'm just going to paste them here. Uh, then I'm going to create a second plot. The second plot will be based on this and obviously the time is the same I can just leave it here or move it here and you will notice obviously that there are differences uh, first of all there are differences in in terms of uh, the amplitude because one direction is uh, stiffer than the other but then also you can see differences slight differences in the period because obviously the period of the structure in one direction is different from the period in the other direction um, as you can see uh, if I select the yellow curve, it corresponds to the x-direction or the orange curve and you can see that there are more displacements and this makes sense because actually my columns were working in the weak axis in the x-direction in the x global x-direction of uh, displacement which means that this uh, actually makes sense so I hope this tutorial was useful for you um, so Please remember, if you have any questions on any of the procedures or values that are used here, uh, make sure that you watch the videos before this, both for the steel moment resisting frame and for the reinforced concrete frame, as your question might be already be answered in there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.